Welcome back to Phlebotomy Solutions video presentation. Today we're going to be talking about blood glucose and PKU testing. Blood glucose is also known as blood sugar, fasting blood sugar, FBS, blood glucose, and of course oral glucose tolerance test, GT or GTT. So why get tested? Typically, you might have a patient come into your lab to get tested for blood glucose uh, levels. So first, it's used to determine whether or not your blood glucose levels within normal ranges. It's also to screen for, diagnose, and monitor diabetes, prediabetes, or hypoglycemia, or low blood glucose. So when should someone get tested? Typically, as part of a yearly physical, when you have symptoms suggesting hyperglycemia, high blood, high blood glucose, or hypoglycemia, low blood glucose. Also, if you're pregnant, and if you're a diabetic, up to several times a day to monitor glucose levels. So what kind of sample is required from your patient? Typically, a blood sample drawn from a vein in your arm or a drop of blood from your finger, also known as a capillary puncture or finger stick. So what exactly is being tested? Glucose is a simple sugar that serves as the main source of energy for the body. The carbohydrates we eat are broken down into glucose, absorbed by the small intestine and circulated throughout the, throughout the whole body. Most of the body cells require glucose for energy production. Now the brain and nervous system cells not only rely on glucose for energy, they can only function when glucose levels in the blood remain within a narrow range. Glucose hinges on the availability of insulin, a hormone produced by the pancreas. Insulin acts as the traffic director, transporting glucose into the body's cells, directing the liver to store excess glucose as glycogen. We cannot live without glucose or insulin and they must be in balance. Normally, blood glucose levels rises slightly after a meal, and insulin is secreted to lower blood glucose levels. So be familiar with these terms, hyperglycemia and hypoglycemia. Hyper, over and excess. Hypo, under, below. Now let's talk about glucose testing and preparing the patient. One thing is we must be sure the patient has not eaten within one or two hours prior to testing if we're doing a timed glucose. We also can do random testing and we always document in the chart what time the patient has fasted and has eaten. If the patient has eaten, how will it affect the test or the outcome? We will not have an accurate outcome if the patient is not fasted unless we're doing a random testing. So which area of the fingers do we use to do a capillary stick? Well, we use a second and or third finger or digit to collect the blood sample. That would be the middle or ring finger. We do not use the first finger of the thumb base, base, basically because of the callousness of those fingers as well as sensitivity. And we don't use the pinky because it's too close to the bone and it's also very sensitive. Now, once we clean the finger with the alcohol swab, we will then go ahead and do the capillary stick and we will wipe away the first drop of blood from the finger with the cotton swab. Always wipe away the first drop because that first drop can be contaminated with alcohol. So we're going to use the second drop and put that on the test strip and monitor it. You have about two minutes from this point to apply the blood sample and prior to the finger stick, we'll always milk the finger and after to get the large drop of blood. So again, we'll milk the finger until a large drop of blood is formed. Now, once we got the drop of blood, we place the blood on the test strip, but be careful not to touch the finger on the test strip. You will contaminate it and you will get uh, bad results. Just the drop of blood. Once you do that, you will get your gauze or your cotton ball and put pressure on the site. The patient can use their thumb on the middle finger or ring finger to hold pressure while you take the lancet, put that in, this, in the sharps container, and anything that has blood on it will then go in the biohazard. Then we just wait for the results. Now, what are the normal ranges of a fasting blood test? Typically, it's between 70 to 126 milligrams per deciliter. And what makes it go up, in, up or down? Disease and disorders within the blood. Now, let's talk about point-of-care testing with the lancet. What is it and why do it? 
Point of care testing is done in the office for fast, easy, and efficient results. And it gets results typically in minutes. It's an easy way for physicians to know if glucose levels are out of normal ranges. Heel sticks for infants. Also, you can do earlobes for infants, children, and adults as well. But more common for children, adolescents, and adults is the standard finger stick or capillary stick. Now let's talk about PKU, neonates, and heel sticks. A PKU stands for phenylketonuria, and it's a test that is done to check whether a newborn baby has the enzyme needed to use in his or her body, a specific amino acid that is needed for normal growth and development. If the baby's body does not have that enzyme that changes the amino acid into another amino acid called tyrosine, that amino acid level builds up in the baby's blood and can cause brain damage, seizures, and mental disorders. The damage caused by PKU can begin weeks after the baby has started drinking breast milk or formula. Babies with PKU need foods low in the specific amino acid to prevent severe brain damage. Now that specific amino acid is found in most foods that have protein such as milk, cheese, and meats. Now it's important to find this disease early. All babies in the United States are tested for PKU right after birth. Each year, about 250 children get PKU which occurs more in whites and Native Americans and is less common in Blacks, Hispanics, and Asians. To have the disease, you must inherit the gene from each parent. The United States Preventive T Service Task Force recommends that all newborns be tested for PKU. The blood sample for PKU is usually taken from your baby's heel called a heel stick. The test is done in the first few days after birth as early as 24 hours after birth. A follow-up test is usually done at age 7 to 10 days, and a urine PKU test is done on a baby who did not have the blood test or who is older than 6 weeks. Now, your baby should be drinking breast milk or formula for 24 hours before the blood sample is taken. PKU test results are more likely to be correct if the blood sample is taken after the baby has been drinking milk or formula for at least 48 hours. If your baby is older than 6 weeks, he or she will have a PKU urine test. You do not need to do anything before your baby has this specific test. Now let's talk about how it's done. Now, as you can see in this diagram, this is a, referred to as a neonatal, neonatal capillary. Neonatal stands for infant uh, pertaining to a newborn. It's a medical term. And as you can see in the diagram, the orange spots are the puncture sites. You don't want to go in the middle of the heel or anywhere lower. As you can see, you have the plantal nerve, medial plantal artery, another plantal nerve, and the lateral plantal artery. So we must be careful not to puncture those sites when we do a heel stick on a neonatal. So again, follow the diagram on the corners of each where the orange is to, be, to have a successful capillary heel stick on a neonate. Now, as you can see, we place the drops of blood on a little test card where these drops of blood fill up the circles on this card that get sent out to be tested. This is a quick and typically painless procedure, but it gets the job done to determine the PKU status. So again, placing the drops of blood, filling the circles is what's going to be successful in the test. Anything short of that will get rejected by the lab. This is the end and thank you for watching Phlebotomy Solutions video presentation.